Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. And for today, it's more of a vlog today, a bit of a mixed bag of all sorts of things going on. Um, I'm going to show you uh, my removal of the sink. The sink is going. I'm not keeping it. I'll talk to you about that in a little while. I've got some plant updates as well. Um, outside, if you're wondering why I'm dressed it, with 24 layers on and a hat on, it's, it's actually about 3 degrees outside. Oh, good. <laughs> the sun's going in. Uh, it's about 3 degrees outside and it's a sunny day for once and the the wind's blowing quite strongly so it really does feel very very cold I guess the wind chill factor will be below zero but in here and this is the benefit of the sun being higher in the sky as we approach March the sun is actually hitting probably three quarters of the greenhouse roof so over here on the coal side of the greenhouse the inverted commas coal side of the greenhouse it's 17.3 degrees which is wonderful even though it's below below three outside over in the warm side of the greenhouse it's above 20 degrees so that's going to really make a difference the sun's coming out again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn you around and i'm just going to show you a couple of updates before i talk to you about the sink and tell you why i'm going to get rid of it Okay, so I said I would give people an update on this Mastervalia Ignea. Don't need to pick it up really, do I? Uh, most of the blooms are out now. And we've got rather a large number of blooms on there. You can see it's looking spectacular. That one's not quite out yet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And at the bottom, there are, it does kind of sporadically, and there's, no, I think I've counted that one, another one down there, don't know if that's a bloom or just a leaf, no, there's definitely a bloom there in the middle, maybe 12, it does sporadically keep popping them up, I mean the, the snowbird that I've got over here, this has been in bloom for months now, and every time I think it's about to finish, it pops another one up. If you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button, ding the notification bell, and you won't miss any updates. Um, so yeah, the Master Valley Rignia, it's not, it won't win any, you know, any prizes because I guess these things have got to be nicely balanced, symmetrical, as you can see they're all kind of over on this side, but if you, whereas that one over there will be on that side, but I mean it's a, an amazing colour, I can't, I just can't get over the colour and especially with the, the yellow at the back there. I'm not very good with colours. I don't know what is that is that a compliment or is that a contrast? I'm not really sure. I always think there are, there are no colour clashes in nature. Well, not not if you've got my uh, colour colour recognition skills, which are pretty non-existent. So yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. So that's the Mastervalia in more or less full bloom anyway. So I probably will divide that at some point. Uh, other things I was going to show you, the Berioda, Dendrodium Berioda is still in full bloom and it's got lots of new ones coming, it doesn't seem to show any signs of fading or going over. I did notice the, where are we, the older ones tend to go paler, they seem to go from this, I don't know, what is it, lilac, purple, I told you I'm not very good with colours. Uh, they seem to get more white in them as they go older. The darker ones, the newer ones, that one's gone there, see. But I mean, it's certainly not had any mass drop yet, and there's there's plenty to come. There's some more down here coming, and um, that really is definitely one to buy if anybody's looking at buying a dendrobium. Uh, where are we? This one over here. It's so long since I've talked about this one. I've totally forgotten what the heck it's called. It's a Nelly Isla, some sort. Uh, but a, I think it is it another name changer. Hang on a second, bear with me. Uh, Burgeria Nelly Isla Swiss Beauty. Bought that in July 2019. And I'm just taking the label out there. I see it's still wet. <coughs> still damp. These are going over now, but the fact that the sun's on them, you can smell them really strongly, which is wonderful. It's nice to come in and actually have a scent of a, of a flower. Uh, reminds me that spring is on its way. 
So we did the Pleurothalis restrepioides the other day. I know it's not a particularly popular plant, and I can see why. I'm still not thrilled with it. It's still it's having its last chance here. These these black markings. Uh, somebody mentioned that it could be that it needs a bit more uh, air movement. But I mean these these are old leaves. It's an old plant. These these are you know this is how it came. The newer ones. If I just whiz you down here, the newer ones that I did from Kiki's, Kiki's, sorry, not Kiki's, Kiki's, these have no black markings on. So that proves to me that it's not my conditions that's causing it. It's That's just the way they arrived. I'm going to get some more Streptocarpus soon. It's time, and you can see they've all put on a lot of that nice, thick, dark growth. And they will soon be doing their thing, and they're absolutely wonderful when they do come. They really do, you know, people notice them more than anything else, I think, even more than the orchids. My <coughs> Dendrobium kingianum is almost, almost in bloom. It won't be long. It's being kept quite cool, even though at the moment in here it's 17, 18 degrees. Uh, overnight it's going down to about eight or nine i watered it quite a while since and it's just not drying out at the moment so it's definitely not getting any more water it's bizarre because the canes do feel a little bit desiccated so i'm not quite sure why that is it, maybe they just can't take up the moisture when they're, they're too cold i don't know uh, some people did say to me that they need to go down to like really cold temperatures but anyway it's not getting any i think it's probably tough enough to survive so i'm going to leave that for now so i'll just hold on a second there's another one this is another dendrobium this is a nobly type this is star class these are a couple of keikis off the big mama this one over here i do notice these these blooms they, they look like the they look like they're going over but they're not they're quite new and I, I wonder whether it's the cold that's making them look like that, kind of crinkling up there. Um, there's tons and tons of new growth coming on that. That's probably going to be a cakey there. But we've got some buds there. Again, this is one of the auction plants. There's another recurring theme. Oh, I can smell this berry odour at the moment. It tends only, you tend only to smell it at, during like dawn and, and dusk times. Well, not dawn. Who's in here in dawn? Dusk. <laughs> Definitely dusk. I'm not in here at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, where else are we? Uh, Nepenthes. It's one of these things, as, as I age, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not really old, but as I age, I find that I learn things, forget them, and then relearn them. So I don't know if anybody else finds that. Uh, what I've been doing with these, I've just been giving them water from the water bowl, just been watering them with a watering can from the water bowl, but as I mentioned at one point a while back, the rain from the water bowl does tend to have, because it's off the garage roof, it does tend to have quite a few nutrients in it, and this might be why I'm struggling to get these things to picture. These pictures are what they kind of came, they came with, and they're not really getting new pictures on them. And I understand that uh, Nepenthes, you know, they grow in poor soils, and this is one of the reasons why they develop these pitchers. So if you do feed them, they're not going to picture the same. And that's a new leaf, there, that tiny little one. So I'll just, we'll just take you over to the, the warmer side. I don't think there's much else going on over here. I'm looking forward to this coming. I've waited a long time for this to come, this uh, <coughs> Epidendrum Comet Valley Orange Star. I repotted it the 20th of March 2018. There's a couple of black leaves on it there. I'll just grab them in passing. It does do this sporadically. Like I say, at the moment it's getting very cold and I'm, because I'm worried about the money, I keep turning the, the uh, thermostat down a little bit more. <clears throat> so anyway, let's just whiz through here. Um, over in the warm side now. So we've got sort of scantier keeps popping up its flowers it does a weird thing it's the same with this one over here this uh, red jewel it's got like after the whole plant it's only got one flowering stalk on it but that they only last a day but like pretty much every day there's another one that pops up 
Um, here's another one. This one is purpurea, Tradescantia purpurea. They're only little, but they're quite they're quite nice. And if you're not expecting them, they're quite a nice addition. So yeah, I was talking about just as the fan starts. So this one is Nepenthes Rebecca Sopa. So it's cross between Ramispina and Ventricosa. This is one of uh, Matt Soper's own hybrids. Anybody who ever watches Chelsea Flower Show might be familiar with Matt Soper's won all these golds for his Saracenia and other Nepenthes, uh, sorry, not Nepenthes, carnivorous plant stands and displays. But this particular one has never actually pictured for me. Um, there might be some tiny ones at the bottom. Now, now there aren't. I've got some basal shoots there. But that particular one, I divided them. Uh, that one's not pictured for me, and they always say that it's because it's not humid enough. So I've turned the humidity up a little bit. I mean, it's, it's 77 at the moment. I, I don't let it drop below 75. This one, which is the original plant, this has pictured, but only twice. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Well, would you believe it? <laughs> wow, I am astounded. Well, 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 that's the first time I've seen that. I definitely did not expect that, as you can probably tell. So my Nepenthes Rebecca Sopa is going to bloom. Gosh, I best get locking that up, hadn't I, and uh, find out what I can do with that. So I can get my own seeds, maybe? Possibly? How can I get my own seeds? I need a male plant, don't I? Although I think these are, these. I don't know, I don't understand whether these are male, female, I don't know, I'm going to have to lock it up, I don't know, it's no use me uh, waffling, I don't know, I'm going to lock it up. I get onto Brad's channel, he, he does things with that, doesn't he, with the uh, Nepenthes seeds and whatnot. Well, gosh, that was a shock. I'm stunned, stunned into silence. Well, not quite. So, okay, what else have we got? The, the nice warm temperatures over here. Helping with my my black-eyed Susan, my Thunbergia brownie, my uh, Mandevela. It's never actually been without a bloom, but at the moment it's it's only got one on it. But I think it won't be long now that that's in some warm temperatures over here. I think it won't be long before that starts to uh, bloom again. At the moment it's in a, a vegetative growth state, and I've got these twining stems shooting off in all directions so it goes all the way up there up there up there up there up there and it's finishing up there at the moment but it can go across the roof if it likes that's the jungle effect that I'm after this epicat layer with a big long name another bloom spike on that one it's just come not very long since um, I have put the uh, Dendrobium sarnoctile and black, the one that I uh, destroyed on the shoots on it. I've put that over in the warm side to see what that does, based on Sarnuk's own advice. Um, I'm having a little bit of problem with this Tradescantia, this one, the green one. You can see how it's just like, it, it's lacklustre in the leaves. There is something not right. Compare that with the green leaves on that. I'll put them next to each other and you can see. There you go. Now look at the leaves on the left compared to the leaves on the right. One looks very healthy, one doesn't. But the odd thing about it is that if we look at the its kind of sister over here, this is exactly the same. So there's something about the conditions I wondered whether it was feed, so I've stuck a feeding stick in this one, just in one side, just to see whether it'll make any difference to that one. Because obviously if it does, then I'll know that that's the problem with that. It's not lack of water. It's certainly well drained, so it's not getting too much water. I don't know. It's just one of those strange things. Anyway, the point of this video was that this sink, when the fans started down here, well, that's one of the problems. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll turn the fan off. Bear with me a second. There we go. Hope that doesn't destroy the video. So, my, my original plan was to vent it underneath and through the louvre windows. 
Um, well, actually, that wasn't my original. That was my second one. My first one was to go underneath. But the, the problem is the piping. This this pipe that I've got in here is getting it from that pipe to a smaller pipe that will go underneath and, and will still maintain some rigidity to let the water through. But I don't know. It just didn't work for me. I couldn't find the right kind of pipe, the right fittings, and so on. So then my second plan was to just put a chug underneath it. Um, but what happens in reality is I collect all the pots that want washing in there and then over time I uh, just take, wait for a day that's a bit milder and go and wash them outside. So I actually never use it uh, in the greenhouse and it cost me about £50, it was obviously it was uh, you know, off eBay like somebody's used it before. And the other problem is, of course, I've got the fan under there, and as we know, electrics and water do not mix, so it's going. I'm not going to get rid of it entirely. I think I'll get some use out of it outside, but uh, for the moment, it's going to go outside for now until I decide what to do with it. Um, the plus point there is that I will get uh, another big space for putting more plants there. Woo, -woo fantastic. Uh, one more thing to mention, just before I skedaddle is I have the world's worst looking Miltoniopsis. Here it is, the crinkliest one on the planet, the most unsturdy one on the planet, but if you look carefully, it's got some flower buds on it. Now one of them looks to me, the one in the middle there, looks like it's going to blast, uh, but I'm not surprised when you look at the state of it. This plant just does not want it to work for me, I don't know why not, I've tried everything. Uh, it's now in the warm side of the greenhouse, even though they're supposed to like the cooler temperatures, but I've put it in here. It's not in the sun, it's in the shade, uh, but just in an attempt to get it to dry out. I've tried it in front of a fan, I've got loads of holes in it. I hardly ever water it, but it still doesn't, doesn't seem to dry out, and I can't see any growth in there. It's very wobbly, it's obviously not got any roots. I won't get rid of it yet, but I'm really curious to see what I'm doing wrong with it. So if anybody's got any suggestions, I know they're supposed to be awkward and difficult to deal with, but um, I don't know, don't like total failures. I would really like to know how to get it to look nice again. So yeah, that's it for today. Just a few plant updates and a little talk about the sink that's going and the sunshine that's coming through the window at the moment. And for now, my next job is to go outside and to repot uh, a hebe that I'm sick of it falling over because it's in two smaller pots. Interesting to see this Thungbergia look, it's uh, attached itself to this orchid here, this, uh, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Myrmecatavola, mir Myrmecatavola, I don't know, don't know how to pronounce it. It was better before Ricard, I could pronounce that. I think I might have to unhook it because I don't want it to take over the orchid. You can hook yourself over there somewhere. Okay. So yeah, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this little short vlog style video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Okay, so I'm filming this bit out of sequence. I've just been outside washing pots, plant pots, and I can't feel my fingers. They've completely gone numb. And um, which makes using a smartphone quite difficult because obviously they react to warm fingers and uh, my phone won't work either because my fingers are too cold to register. <laughs> so, bizarre. However, it's 16 in here, so it's still quite warm in here. I wanted to do an update on this Cilogeny, um Cilogeny Cristata. Now, I've tried everything with it, but as you can see, the brown markings are still there, still underneath. Uh, nothing, as far as I can see, has actually changed. I've tried it with insecticide and I've tried it with fungicide, and they're both exactly the same. And I've done, I've given it several treatments of both. So I guess it's just a case of leave it and see what happens. There's no sign of any any growth on it, you know, any any buds. It's not going to flower this year, that's for sure. So I just thought to give an update on it. I know a few people were interested to see what the outcome was, well there isn't one, it's uh, 
it's exactly as it was as you were and we'll just have to see what happens i guess if it if it does start to grow new pseudo bulbs or the bulbs oh by the way i did repot it as well uh, i forgot to mention that if you can see there i've put lots of holes in the pot and i've filled the bottom because i've not been able to get like a, a shallow net basket so the bottom half of the pot i've put stones in so there's definitely good drainage there and the top half of the pot that's where i have put the media and it's just in bark and the the roots do actually go up to the it does have quite a good root system on it so i guess it's just a wait and see so thanks everybody for all their input on that it was a really interesting one to do but uh, We'll see what happens with it and see if it does develop any more of these brown markings or if any new growth comes on it and that has the brown markings. We shall see. So the jury's out on that one. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll say I'll just put this one into in amongst all the other clips. So I won't sign off. I'll just leave it at that.